Okay, this is uh, what I call a spiked granny because in every granny square you go spike down into the row below it. And if you look carefully, you can see that it goes into the stitch in front of the hole where you have the two sets. Then it comes down below the set into the stitch below it. And then it comes into the next set. So instead of having three stitches come in between the sets, it comes on either side of the hole and down through the hole. So it's a spiked granny. I like it because it's a lot to denser. You don't have uh, most of the holes that you get in a granny. All you have is the ones that go off in the corners. It makes a good size blanket. There's uh, 15 panels. They're 13 and a half inches each. So we'll be doing um, three across and five long. And it makes a good size twin blanket. So, um, I took a picture of the whole blanket on my mom's queen size bed laying across it. So you can get a good look at what it looks at. And I'll have that on right now. See you in a minute. This is Red Heart Super Saver. Pretty in pink. Okay. This is one of two variegated. This is called Berry Pooling. It's all Red Heart Super Saver. This is the Red Heart Super Saver. Whoop. Amethyst. Huh. It was printed funny. It's kind of wiggly. Anyway, there's the amethyst. I know it looks blue. I can't help that. This is the second variegated. It's called Macaw. Also Red Heart Super Saver. And the outside one for the squares is Royal. Super saver. Now this is this is seven ounce. This one's seven ounce. This is seven ounce. These two come in five ounces. Okay. And just to be on the safe side, make sure you have two of these because you don't know what you're gonna you don't know how it's gonna turn out or what you're gonna do with it at the end. Always nice to have an extra one of those. These um, because they're outside colors, I would also get two of them, okay? All right. Uh, oop. Don't fall off the table. I'm using an eye hook from Bally's. I like their hooks. You use a nice, um, reasonably short tapestry needle. It doesn't really point it at the end, but it's not super blunt either. The larger super blunt ones you want to use with your really thick yarn. This is good enough to get in where you need it and to hide your threads. All right. First step, the center granny square. This is a regular granny square in all ways. Nothing different, nothing complicated. And that's how we're going to start it. So you bring your yarn over the back of your hand, bring it around two fingers, twice. Hold it. Take your feed yarn, bring it back, hold it. You bring your hook up under the two short wire, the short threads, grab the long one, pull it out, and we're twisting it. I'm going to do that again. Go up under it like this, grab it, and twist. Now you can pull a loop through that and it won't undo. There you go. Your tail should always be, no, 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 we don't pull you yet. Your tail should always be headed in the same direction your hook is, because you're going to crochet over it. Now we're going to chain two, and this will equal the first uh, double 
crochet in the cluster. We wrap, go backwards through the hole, go backwards into the yarn, grab some, pull it through two loops, grab, pull through two loops, wrap it, back up into the circle, bring your yarn through two loops, bring your line through two loops, and that equals our first granny cluster. Now we're going to chain two for a corner, and we're going to make three more double crochets. Okay, that's our second side of our little square. Chain two, make a third set. You know, I actually started making double magic circles because every time I did a single one, it came apart. <laughs> and then I found out how to do it right the first way and I decided I still like the double circles. I don't have to weave in the center any more than it is. Because if you think about it, since it goes around, well, it goes around twice and then you're going over the tail. So three times, three times you have 12 stitches in it. That's pretty good, huh? Now this is the end of our fourth side. So we're going to chain one and we're going to close our circle. And you pull in the tail. Like that. See how this is the one that, that got smaller? On the same end that the tail comes out of, you pull that. So, see, then you pull the tail. There you have it. Very simple. Now, yeah, where's my scissors? I like to leave a tail. I can cut it off right to the end. But if I leave a tail, then I always know where my back is. Now, because we're changing, we're doing two colors, two rows of the same color. I'm going to close this with a single crochet. So go through here and through here. Why did I do that? Because if I try going through this whole chain here, I'm going to have a mess. I'll show you. Now see how it pulls this apart? And it's going to make a mess up here. So I go through the back of the of the third chain, the top chain, and I go through the the back of the stitch next to it, and I have two strands over my hook. Pull through one, wrap, pull through two. That is a single crochet. Okay, once more. You don't wrap first. You go through. Now, 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 get out of my way, baby. Bring your hook through, bring a loop through. You have two loops on your hook. Wrap and pull through both of those, and that's a single. Now, this is the hole for your corner, and that's your single. We're going to do, we're going to chain two, and we're going to do two more double crochets in over, I should say, over the shaft of that single crochet. Now, that's the first part of our, that's the second part of this cluster here for the corner. Okay? So we're starting at the end of the cluster. Do not chain one. Go right to the next corner. And we're going to do three double crochets. Chain two. And three double crochets. And this is your normal granny 
corner cluster. You find in almost every granny pattern. Okay, that's one corner. I'm just going to zip through the next two here until we get to the end. Chain two, three more in the same corner. No chain between. Chain two. Okay, now here's our last, the, the side we started with, the corner. We're going to put two, three double crochets in here. Now because we aren't, uh, because we are changing color and we're not using the same color, I'm going to chain two and slip stitch in the same spot I put the single crochet before. Here's the top of the chain right here. And I'm going to use the back of this loop and that one. Oop. Come on back. Come here, baby. That gives me two chains. And it keeps it from splitting away from the rest. See there? Nice and tight. Okay, now how I like to do this, I take this part here and I pull it through till I feel it snap to the back. And I hold my thumbnail there and pull. It's small. Easy to get around. Okay? Okay. Here's the yarn we're going to use for our first variegated Red Heart Super Saver and it says pooling on it. It doesn't matter what color you use. You take your, go down to any yarn shop and put colors together. Or if you have most of the colors and you want to find a variegated that goes with it, go down to the yarn shop. Okay, so we put our hook through the hole, any, any corner, bring our loop through, let me use guys, there we go, okay, I'm going to drop the other tail, chain two. Now all I'm doing is, it ends up very thick if we don't kind of tighten things up. And that's what I was doing. I just tightened it up. We put one double crochet in the corner hole. And now this is where we start the pattern. Right in this stitch that goes to this line here. You have one, two, three. You have stitch, stitch, and stitch. I'm going to go right through both threads of that. Pull up a loop and do our double. Okay? Now, every corner is going to have two in the hole and one on the side. Now, here's our hole. We have a stitch on this side, a stitch on this side, and the hole. So we're going to wrap, go into the first stitch, and do a double. We're going to wrap and we're going to go down here into the chain below the hole. I'm going to go down in there below the hole. Bring your loop up nice and high so it's well above your uh, line. 
and finish your double crochet. Now this is the one after the hole. We go through that loop and do our double crochet. And that's what the pattern is going to look like all the way around. Without making a chain, we go into the next, whoops, almost did it again. We go into the stitch before the corner. Do two double crochets in the corner. One and two. Chain two. Do two double crochets in the corner. And we do a double crochet in this first stitch that goes around the first stat, uh, shaft. Okay. Without chaining one, we're going to go into the stitch in front of the hole. Now with this bottom thing here, you can't really tell without looking which one is the center stitch. So you have to kind of look in there and see what's going on. This is the stitch that belongs to this line. This is the stitch that belongs to the middle one. And this is the stitch that belongs to the end one. So you want to wrap and go into the middle stitch. Pull it up until it's well above your working surface. And complete your double crochet. Then we go into this stitch right after the hole. Okay. So there's your pattern. We wrap, we go to the stitch in front of the corner. And we do two double crochets in the corner. Whoops, 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 whoops. There we are. And chain two. And we do two double crochets in the corner. <laughs> I did the knot wrong on this one. This is a square I did before. So I have to fight my way in that little hole. And you do the, here's the next hole. We do the stitch before the hole. The stitch in the middle. So we want the one that goes around the central shaft here. That one. Now if you don't bring your stitch up above your surface, at about the half mark of your double. Then your edges are going to go in. So you'll have a, your pattern will be like this. Now we're going to wrap, go into the stitch before the corner. Two stitches in the corner hole. Chain two. Two stitches in the corner hole. And you started covering up, but that's the stitch you want to go into. There you have your second corner. Okay. <laughs> into the stitch before the hole. In the base. And the stitch before the corner. Two in the corner hole. Now this is the corner that we started with. So, all right. We are back around to the corner where we started this row. I put one in the stitch before the corner, one in the stitch, one in the corner. 
another one in the corner, so edge and two stitches. And I'm going to come back with the same color, and I need a starting place for my next row. So instead of chaining through two, I chain one, and I'm going to slip stitch where I did in the other, which is the top of the chain three and the back of the stitch next to it. Bring a stitch through, two loops on the hook, you can loop through both of those, and that's your single crochet. That is the shaft of your single crochet right there. So we're going to chain two, and we're going to wrap and come down around the shaft of the chain one. Okay. And we need to go in the stitch right beside this. We're going to write in here. We've got one, two, three. We're going to go in the hole that we slip stitched into. Then we're going to wrap. Here's our next hole. Go in the stitch in front of the wrap, in front of the hole. Go into the stitch on the bottom. And go through the stitch on the side of the hole. There we go. Okay, so we're starting the pattern on the second row of the color. Go to the first hole before the, the first stitch before the next hole. Down in there, back up. And then the stitch on the other side of the hole. Now you will notice when we do this, from now on, you only have one stitch that does not have a hole in it. That does not have a stitch in it. One stitch is free in each time. From now on, you don't have to worry about which hole it is. That's only on when you come down to this first row because you didn't, didn't do the stitches on either side on that one. Okay? So, the stitch before the corner Two stitches into the corner. Chain two. Two stitches into the corner. And one stitch after the corner. Okay. And that's it, going around. Do make sure you bring your loop up for your sides are going to bow in. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go around and I'll meet you back at this corner, okay? And we're going to put our next color on. And we're back at this corner we started with on this row. Do two in the hole. And we're finishing this color, so we're going to chain two and slip stitch. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. Okay, we're going to add our purple, our amethyst. Go in any corner, and I'm going to pull up a single loop this time where I don't go around two threads. I like to use this a lot of times because it's a lot thinner and harder to see where you started, but you have to remember this bottom loop is going to come loose, so you have to go back and tighten it until you uh, tie it in. So I'm going to go around through the hole again with one more set. This equals two double crochets. Wrap and go through the hole right by the corner, the stitch. 
Okay, and we're just going to continue the pattern. I'm still, still experimenting and learning with this camera setup. The lights keeps changing in this room because I only have, I have regular light bulbs. I have a, a lamp that has daytime light on it and that makes ripples in the video. I have a little lamp on the side that's made for using with video or camera and it's got all kinds of settings and I have to keep changing according to how much sun is coming through the window in front of me or not if it's nighttime and every time I move this to stop I have to bring it back and try to find the same setting I had it at so yes we got different lighting and we got different closeness and we got <sighs> all kinds of things going on here. All right. All corners of the pattern part of this square is exactly the same. You go into the stitch next to the corner hole, two doubles in the corner hole, chain two, two doubles in the corner hole and one double next to it. The very first stitch next to it. There. Okay, you're going around. I'll meet you back over here. Okay, now we're continuing with the same color. So that means we chain one and we go in and do our single crochet. That's our shaft we're going to crochet around. Chain two, come down around that shaft and do our second double because that counts as our first. And there we go. Skip one stitch. The next stitch is the one next to the hole. We continue our pattern around. I like this pattern because it covers up a lot of the major holes in the granny. And all you really have is the corners, corner holes and they kind of look pretty. The little teardrops disappearing into both sides. There it is. Okay, so going around and I'll meet you here and we'll put on our next color. Okay, we finished our third color. We're going to chain two and slip stitch. Now we cut the yarn. Okay. Okay, here's our macaw. Lovely variegated. And we're going to use a different, uh, another way to hook on. It's not my favorite, but a lot of people do it. You make a slip stitch. Put your hook through the slip stitch. Okay go where you have to go to, to hook on. Pull it nice and tight. There. It means it leaves a little bar in front, a little knot in back, but overall you won't see it that much. It's just not my favorite way to do it. Chain two. Do a double crochet in your hole. Double crochet next to it. And off we go with our pattern. It really is a simple pattern. It just it just looks really cool the way it interacts with each other. So no problem. Now after 
the two rows of this will we'll be going with the royal, the dark blue. It really gets me the way the purple looks, the amethyst looks blue to me on the screen. I wonder if it will in your players or not. Get in there. There we go. Okay, now you can do this without me. So, you know how to do your corners. Okay, go around. When you come back here, you're going to do the one stitch next to the hole, two double crochets in the hole, chain one, and do a single crochet right here in this little junction right here. Back of that one, back of this one. Chain two, do a double crochet over the shaft of your single crochet, go around. When you come back to here, you chain two and slip stitch, okay? Now I'll be back for the finish, the finish of this side. Okay, we're back at our beginning again. And because we're, chain, we're not changing colors, we're using the same one. We're going to chain one, do a single crochet, chain two, go down over the shaft of our single crochet, and we're ready to go again. Okay. When we go around this time, we're going to chain two and slip stitch. I'm going to put in all my ends and then we'll come back and start the uh, last color. Okay, see you back around. Okay, we're finishing this one. And the next stitch we use is going, the next color we use is going to be royal. There we go. That's my needle, there you are. Okay, we're finishing this one. And the next stitch we use is going, the next color we use is going to be royal. There we go. That's my needle, there you are. I'll just stick this down in here so it doesn't give me trouble. Go right through the stitch we put it in. Come out the back. I'm just going to sneak along in the back of these loops. You don't want to go forward where it can be seen in front, see? Make sure you're not pulling your knot down. So I'm sneak along in back of these loops here. This isn't doesn't have a loop over it, so I'm going to wrap around in it. Okay. Uh, it doesn't show in front. It doesn't show in back. Okay. Don't run away from me. Oh, I gotta turn this light off. Turn this one on. 
it's dark outside now and I have too much there we go how's that okay let's see if I can get a little brighter over here like I said I'm still learning Is that better there we go okay now we're going to go back we're going to go around the stitch that we haven't gone into which will be this one I guess we go back along the same row where we went down this way and I'm kind of twisting it around in an effort to snag the same thread that went that away when I go that way that really locks it in. I don't care how many washings you do, it isn't coming out. Works really good. Okay. Let's get it over here on the right side. And this is another way that you can do it, starting with a slip knot. You hold, you take your tail and you hold it about as high up as a double crochet or whatever size stitch you're going to do. You wrap around. See how I brought that around the shaft? Go through my edge. And do my double. Now it is thicker. You don't really notice it after it's a part of a grouping. See? When we come back, we go right in where this slip stitch is. Because that is the first, second, third. That's the first stitch right here. Okay? So, once more, you know how to do the, the design. So you go around and you do your two rows. Well, actually go around uh, with this row and I will come back and... Uh, what do I do here? Ooh. <laughs> I went on the other side of the hole. See, went in this one, skip this one, go into this one. If you make mistakes, you could fudge them too on the next row. You say, oh, I made that mistake. You just pretend like the hole's there and go through it anyway. Nobody will know the difference and you won't be able to find it yourself when you're done. Guarantee it. Okay. Go ahead and go around. I'll come around and hook into this with you and we'll go up to the second level. Okay, here's the last way I'm going to show you how to add on using a slip knot. Okay, you take the place you're going to add on and you hold the tail so that your stitch is about as high as the stitch you're going to be making, whether it's a single, double, or what. You wrap your yarn, you come down in your hole, pull through, and pull through. There you go. Now this is the same height. There we go. When you come back, this first stitch here, since it's an independent stitch of its own, you go right into it. So when we go around, we're going to come back into that stitch. Okay? And we just kind of Go back and go through the motions. 
do our design. And I'll come around and show you how we slip stitch into that uh, beginning there. And then we'll go up to the second row. We're going to do something different at the end of this color. I'll tell you what in a minute. Here we are at our second, our last corner. Chain two, slip stitch, and chain one. And we're going to turn. Now what we slip stitched into was the stitch that belongs to this first shaft. So the next two stitches are your corner. Those are your corner chains. Okay? So when the, when the front is towards you, you can see the front bottoms of all your stitches. When it's away from you, they're hiding on the other side. So we're going to have to dive over the crown into the other side and pick these out. So we're going to go over to the other side and we're going to pick the first of the two corner ones and do the slip stitch. Make sure it's a nice loose stip, slip stitch because you don't want to pull your corners in. And there's another one. Now, from now on, this is probably the easiest row you'll ever do. A nice loose, cor loose row of slip stitches all the way around. Okay, that's all there is to it. Alrighty. Alrighty. Okay. Just went through my stitch just before where we went on. And this is your two corner stitches right here. And right in here is your chain one. Now sneak into this chain one and do your closing slip stitch. peculiar thing happens now and we turn it to the front our slip stitches are all in back okay this the front is facing us again so our slip stitches are facing the back so we're going to find the two that belong the one that belongs to this shaft over here which is the one that's wrapping around over in this direction that's the one for the last the last post of this set so the next two we know are the corners. So the next one wraps around this post and this is the one we're going to use to start our variegated. So if you look in front, you see all these little divots, these little holes. That's the back of the, um, that's the turnover or the back of your slip stitches. So if you slip right down inside that little hole, you get both sides of your slip stitch. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my favorite way. Chain two. Do a little stretching and pulling. There we go. Now we, all we have to do is go down into these little divots and catch the whole slip stitch behind both strands and do that down to your corner so you have a row of double crochets going in your slip stitches both sides sometimes you catch the other ones to take a little peek make sure you're not getting three strands on it or just one okay go ahead go down and I will meet you at the corner Okay, here's our two cornered stitches. We're going to do two double crochets in each of those corner slip stitches. Chain two, go back into the second one. Make sure you get both sides of the slip stitch and do two doubles in it. 
and that's all there is to the corner. No problem. You just continue on around. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay. Okay, we're on, last, on our last two stitches. And we're just going to do our two double crochets in each one like we did before. Chain two in the middle. Okay, now you can see this, this stitch goes to this shaft. So this stitch goes to this shaft. So we're going to go down that shaft, that stitch, and we're also going through the back one of this one, the back uh, thread. There we go. Alrighty. I'm going to go uh, get you working on the last row. Here we are back with our royal blue. Royalty. Royal. Different brands have different um, names for it, but it all comes out to be a royal blue. Now, See the way this comes off of here, okay? If you should make a corner and it should be like it's coming off of here, undo it, back it off one stitch this way and redo the corner and you'll have it in place. Same way if it looks like it's coming off this way, take it off, make one more stitch in the side, then do your corner and it'll stick out right. Sometimes it's just the way you look at it, it just doesn't turn out right. But it's easy to adjust. Okay. Stick our royalty on here. One, two. And you notice I'm going around, I'm going in the hole and around the slip stitch, the chain stitches. Okay, now, on every corner, the beginning one is easy because you go into that before you start the corner. But the last one is always difficult, to, difficult because you're partially covering it up. You've got to turn the stitch over to the back and wrap. And you see this little stitch right here, this little cross piece? Right there. That's what you're going to be looking for. It's hard to find on the end, ends because they're kind of scrunched <laughs> you're kind of scrunched you do your double crochets in that the rest of them are easy to find there are all these little crossbars right here okay so do this wrap go in that little crossbar do our double and this has the effect of pulling the top stitches, the top of the stitches, I should say, in front. And it actually looks like you've top stitched a line of uh, slip stitches right across the top of your material. Of course, I know you didn't, and you know you didn't, but people are going to be wondering. <laughs> Always keep on guessing. Okay, I'll do one more. Whoops. Ah. See what it's doing? Make that corner, that edge really stand out all the way around. Okay, so you go ahead and do that and I'll come back to do the corners with you. We are at the last stitch before the corner. 
And this one isn't warped. There's no problem getting into it. You do your two half doubles in the hole. I mean half doubles. Two double crochets in the hole. <laughs> Chain two. Two more double crochets in the hole. Come over and find that poor little guy right down there. Trying to hide from us. And you're easily on your way to the next side. See how that makes that look? It pops out more because you covered it here. Makes more of a contrast. Okay, so go ahead and do the rest of your outside and I'll meet you at the end. And you've actually finished the square. Go ahead and put two double crochets in this last corner. Chain two. And this stitch goes with this shaft. So this is the one we want to crochet slip stitch into. Okay. Bye, Kelly. Okay. There we have it. Nice, huh? Okay, now I've got to go figure out how I'm going to connect these because I haven't decided that yet. I have uh, three more I have to finish out to this size and I'm going to work on that. You already know what it looks like because I showed you at the beginning, but I haven't seen it yet. Okay? So, um... Stick around. I'll be back in a few minutes for you. A few days for me. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to start with an apology. I decided to use the same color yarn for the edge. And I already had you chain two and tie off. Instead of chaining two and tying off, do it like you do when you continue a color. Chain one, do a single crochet, and then we're going to chain up one. Okay? Now, what I did here, I had already gone through all my things all of my squares and tied in the end so that I couldn't find an end to work with and this is what I ended up with. I had to put one in the back, weave it in and come out here. So uh, if you went ahead and finished all your edges already, I'm sorry, just tie one on and let's go with it, okay? So now this is called a barred slip stitch. It's something I made up about uh, 2015. You drag it forward. We're going to go into the side, just leaving one thread through of the um, single crochet. And we're gonna pull it through, holding that little thing down, let go, pull through the one on our hook. We're gonna drag our feed line through. Got a little problem here because I have a knot. When you go through the hole, you hold this little feed thread with your thumbnail. Pull it through. Once you get it through so it's past the feed line, you can let go of it. Pull it through the loop on your hook. So instead of going, doing a regular slip stitch where you go down like this, pull it through and pull it through. You're dragging your feed line forward. Then you're going down in. Get in there. Ah. Okay. Here's what I'm trying to do. I need to go to the back of my stitch and the little stitch behind it. The one we went into to make our, our front line here. So we're going to go to the top of the stitch and that little piece behind it. So I need to drag my feed line through, go down through those, grab the feed line with my thumb, and pull a loop up. Once you're past that little bar, let go of it and pull it through. That keeps that, that makes that come through with it and get tighter. Okay, so we're going to drag it forward. Sorry about the cat hair. Drag it forward, 
I have help with my feline friends here. Put it through those two loops. Drag it up. I'm looking at the camera instead of the thread. Drag it through. Let go of the little line. Drag it through. So it's drag, push, hold. Pull, release, and pull. Or you can just after a while you get so used to dragging it, it's just drag, push, pull. Drag, push, pull. Drag, push, pull. Now the act of put of dragging it forward and pushing it through those little holes, those lines, make sure you only have two of them. Not three, Chris, two. Thank you. It brings us down here where it's real easy to grab. Otherwise it's gonna be hard to it's hard to get it through there. You have to twist it around to get it through there. So you pull it, push through there, grab it with your thumb, and it makes it real fast and easy to pull it through and up. So it's drag, push, pull, pull. Drag, push, pull, pull. See? Yeah. This is why I do this. See the edge here? And you hold it directly edge on. You see all the stitches. You hold it directly front. You don't see at the top of the stitch. All you see is the edge. If you look at it backwards, it's not facing you either. All you see is the edge. That's because it's directly squared off. See if I can get it squared off you. Don't bounce. Don't bounce. No bouncing. There we go. Okay. Absolutely squared off. So, that makes it really good for connecting pieces. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll be back in a minute and show you the corner. All right. And here's my corner with my two uh, chains. Here's the stitch in front of it. So I'm going to drag, go to the top of that stitch, and that little bar in back. Bring it through and through. Now I'm going to drag forward and I'm going to go to this bottom thread right here of the chain. That leaves two threads of the chain on my hook. Bring it through and through. Now I chain two. Drag it forward. I'm going to go through the bottom of the second chain. Right there. Oop. Ah, there we go. Pull it through. Come here, you. There we go. There we go. Come on. Come on. Good little boy. Okay, not a good little boy. Go through. Grab. Pull and pull. <laughs> oh, okay, bear with me. To the, the bottom, bring it through and through. Wow, did it. Okay, now this is a stitch that goes to this line, so we're going to go in it through those two pieces, through and through. And here we are. Just like that. And there's your point. You have a nice pointy little corner. Okay? And that's going to look real nice when we connect them together. You have a nice, strong, flat edge. Okay? All right. So you do that around. And uh, all we have left to do with these now is connect them together, and then uh, we can put a border on them. Okay? Bye. Okay, back again. Um, you put the pieces face to face to connect them. So here's, you can tell here's the front of the one, here's the front of the other. You put them face to face. The next thing you do is you make sure you can identify the two corner stitches. Here's your corner stitches right here. Here's your corner stitches right here. Okay. So we're going to go through. We're going to go through one of them. 
under. So we got two of the stitches of the corner stitch on the hook. Pull through our thread. Okay. And then find the other one. We're going to go to the bottom stitch of the corner on this side. Come on, where are you? Come on. Come on, baby. It's this one. I'm trying to do the wrong one. There we go. We pull the stitch through there. So we have both corner stitches on the same side. And pull this through. Now I'm going to do something. That I don't normally recommend. But it really helps me when I'm starting this. So I don't get a loose end. I pull this down to where my hook's holding the, the, the loop. And I'm just going to give it a quick little, quick little single tie like that. Nothing big, not, no big knots or anything. It keeps this from coming through and making this beginning very loose. Okay? Now, we have our nice squared in, edge here. See how flat it is? See? So we're going to go through the outside of the first stitch the one closest to us, and the outside of the other stitch, the one farthest away from us. There we go. And do a slip stitch. Okay. The one closest to us, the one farthest away, and slip stitch. Closest, farthest, slip stitch. Closest, farthest, slip stitch. Do that all the way down. Make sure your slip stitches aren't super tight. You want them snug, but not real tight. If they're real tight, they're going to pull your edge and pucker your squares. If they're too loose, you're going to really see the connection between them. You notice I get this little problem where I lose the, lose the boy. There we go. Okay. Now. That's what your edge is going to look like. Just like that. See? Comes out really nice. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm connecting three panels at a time and when I've got all five sets of three then I'm going to connect the five sets together. So let's go along, connect end to end, tie it off, end to end, tie it off. Then when you go connect three to three you'll be doing one long run down the middle. Okay? Now because you're doing it right on end to your corner here, when you do it the other way you're going to do it end to the other corner. And this is going to be very small, very tight, and you're going to have your distinct squared edges, okay? All right. So, that's how you do it. Really easy. Nice, easy slip stitch. Through and through like that, see? And it comes, it's nice and flat on the back too. It's not, it's not a real high profile connection. See that? See? It's a low profile connection. And this is a very good stitch for when you're connecting different colors together. This is the back of these two squares that I connected. You see it? You see how flat it is? But look how it is on the front. You can't see. If you pull it apart, it pops right back together again. This was an alternative color that I made in a smaller square using two, four, six, eight rows of four colors, two of each color, four rows, and then doing the uh, slip stitch, the barred slip stitch around the edge. And these are, um, I think they're nine inches or eight inches. Just a minute, let me check. 
these are eight and a half inches so I would do four of these across by six long and then uh, make a nice big border on it it make a good throw couch throw or you could make it really big and make it like for a double bed triple bed um, you could do them all in this color or do it like I did here where these two say the same you have this the white and pink white pink but you have the dark on the outside the gray on the outside dark on the inside gray on the inside I just did them opposite each other I like this one for a whole bedspread my mom likes this one <laughs> And we both like the bright one. So go figure. But uh, play around with your colors. You can play around with the size. You could even make small squares doing this by just smaller squares using just three colors. And bordering it, you'd have them with the border. It'd be about seven and a half. Well, let's see. One, two, yeah. About seven and a half inches long with the border for connecting okay now you've you've done your panels of one together okay now you're just going to do this on a three panel and what you want to do is you want to mark your ends make sure you have the right stitch on the end on the corner you want to mark the stitches on each side of the corner where you're going to connect them across here so you got that. Okay. Now these stitches in the middle here, I counted in 12 from one end, 12 from the other, and then I counted the ones in between, and I had one extra on that side. So this tells me somewhere around in here to connect two stitches together. I did the same thing here, two stitches together. This one is even, so I didn't have to worry about that one. I'll put the two stitches here. Go through one side, come over to the other, go through it. And you have the backs. Uh, 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 I got an extra thread in there. Go through the back of this one and the back of this one. That's the far side. And pull a marker through there. So, I'm going to go down here. When I get to this point, I just go through this side and I go through both of those where I've marked it. Through here. You should have seen me a while ago trying to do this. I had my big old cat laying on my yarn on my table here. That's the one that went through like a freight train a while back. <laughs> Use a pistol. Okay, go through the next stitch. Through the next stitch, outsides. Bring your hook through. Slip stitch. Outside. Outside. You've done this a lot of times, connecting all your pieces into three panels. Five panels of three, I should say. Okay, I'm going to go down here to where I have to connect two sides, one side to the other, where the count was wrong. Now here's where I go in one, and I go in two of these. I'm just going to take this out. Go in one, pull the hook up, go into the next one like that. Pull it through that. Yeah, now I've connected two stitches to one stitch. Go a little bit along it. 
so he doesn't sew up on the other side. You can't tell where you connected two stitches to one. Nice and even. And your ends are nice and even. See here? You don't want one puckering out farther than the other. Okay. I'm going to go over to the corner and I'll be back. I'll show you how to connect it here. Okay now. Go through our outside here and our outside to here, so they're connected together. Oop, I got one more stitch to go on this side of the knot. Knots are hard; you just kind of kind of bully your way through them. I'm coming through, I don't care what you say. Okay, now you go to the end here, and the end here, which is why I put this little thing in. Okay, and you go to this end here. have any extra shit we had to go through. Pardon my French. Didn't have any extra things we had to go through there, except work around that fiddly little knot. I must be in a fiddly mood today. I'm fiddly this and fiddly that. There we go. Going beyond the stitch, this, the, the edge a few times. No hole. That's what we want. Okay. So, I'm going to go on and do this panel like I did the other where I have to add this center stitch. Come back and do this just like we did that. And we come back and finish the end just like we do our um, single panels when we're putting them together. And that's all there is to the connecting them. Okay. Now when we get when you get all of your panels connected, we're going to start on the outside. And I have a I have a neat border that I made up for um, when I did the uh, crochet crowds peppermint throw. And uh, that worked out really good for that and I think it'll be a good one for this one. Okay. See you later. Okay. I've got the whole blanket here that I finished. <laughs> And I can't show you on here. I'm going to go spread it out on a bed somewhere, let you see it. But this is what your border looks like on the front. And this is what it looks like on the back. See? You get this nice line here by one particular way you insert your hook. There we go. Now I'm going to show. I'm not going to show you on the dark color because it's too hard to see. So we're going to show you this way. Gray on gray. Okay. Now, uh, about there, you pull your loop through the hook, pull it through the second loop, so that's two stitches in a row, go through both of them, and then chain two, okay? This is to start it. 
you wrap, go behind, wrap, go behind, wrap, go into the second stitch, go into the next stitch. Actually, this next stitch is the one that actually belongs to the whole shaft we're making here. Go through three stitches. Go through four stitches, go through three, wrap. Now the first couple ones look fiddly, but you can find it. There's a, there's a space between these two shafts. You want to go under this first back loop and down into that hole between the two shafts. Pull up a loop. Then you want to wrap. You want to go back down that hole. See this little crossbar here? You want to go above the crossbar. Then you wrap, go down into the stitch you just used, go into the next stitch, bring it through three, bring it through four, bring it through three. Wrap, go under that top crossbar and into the hole between the, the shafts, the posts. Bring up a loop, wrap, go through that same hole above that little bar, then wrap, go in the stitch you just used, and the next stitch. Through three, through four, through three. All you have to do is make sure every time you go above that little crossbar, because that's going to give you that nice stitched looking line in back. And you just ignore it. You'll be going above it sometimes, below it sometimes, and your back is not going to look nice. I mean, maybe your back will, but the back of the crochet won't. Okay, there we go. See, got that nice stitch in back. Okay. Now, corners are a little different. You find your corner, your two stitches corner, the stitch in front of it, and the stitch in back of it. This is going to be first stitch, three stitches, and fifth stitch, okay? So, first I got to get to this first stitch. So, do one more regular. There's that crossbar. There it is into that one, and into the last stitch before the chain two. Okay, now, this, this first stitch and this fifth stitch in the corner group is called a transition stitch, because it has, it'll have two legs, one in the stitch and one in the chain three, and it'll also have um, double stitches, chain ones on it. So, you chain one. Since we're going around the corner, we need extra room. Wrap, go under that bar just like normal, and chain one. Whoops, there. And chain one. Wrap, go below, above that little crossbar, and wrap, go through the last stitch before the chain two, go into the chain two. Go through three, go through four, go through three. I don't need, oh, wait a minute, I got somebody trying to, trying to crash the party over here. There we go. Okay. Now the next three stitches are going to be in only this, so you won't be going through two stitches. So you modify the bottom. So we chain one, wrap. Go under that, go into that little chain one stitch and behind, chain one, wrap, go under, wrap, go into the chain two hole, pull it through two stitches because you only have one place you're going under, go through four, go through three. Wrap and chain one. Wrap, 
go through that little stitch, a little extra stitch you made, chain, wrap, go underneath, make sure you're over that little bar, wrap, go through the chain two space, go through two, go through four, go through three. That's two inside the chain three space. Chain one, wrap, go into the second chain, second part of that stitch, chain one, wrap, go in the hole above that little bar, wrap, go into the chain two space, go through two, go through four, go through three. Now you have three in the chain space only. You have your first transition stitch. The next one will be your last. So we wrap and chain one, wrap, go in that second chain there, pull up a loop and chain one, wrap, go into the back, wrap, go into the chain two space and into the chain one space. Go through three, go through five, go through three. Wrap, and this time you just have to remember to go through that little space there. We're done with our, in, with our corner. Wrap, wrap, and space, stitch. There you go, there you go. And we made our corner. And I'm going to do a couple more so you can see that it balances out really nice. See how nice the corner turned out? There's no big holes. We didn't have to do spaces between the stitches. Nice and solid and pretty. And the back carries on our little line. And the top looks okay. Okay, so that's your corner. Now, I'll show you something else on this. I don't care what I do with it much, so I'm just going to show you how to connect these guys. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, I'm getting there. Do this one, do this one, and I can wrap, wrap first, wrap first, that's a girl, okay. Two, three, four, three. Now, this is the, this stitch goes with it's supposed to go with a stitch up here and it's missing because the first stitch is actually the one that's over the second stitch. The second stitch you go into is actually the stitch that belongs to the shaft you just made. So this stitch belongs to the last stitch before it, okay? So, there you go. Okay. So we wrap. I don't know if I did that out of camera or not. I hope not. 
we wrap to like normal. Okay. Wrap and go into the, this stitch and go into that stitch. Okay, now you can see that this stitch is, is carrying two stitches. This stitch is carrying two stitches. If you put any more in there, you'd be overkill. If it didn't have one in there, it's underkill. You need that stitch. Scissors. Okay, now, when your stitches are on the top, they go around and under the one in front of them. So we're going to pull this all the way up. A fairly good tail on there. We're going to go through here. Get under there. There we go. I didn't want the one under it. Pull this through. Boop. And come back to the top of the hole. And we're going to go down those three stitches. Pull it until it's the same size as the others on top. Okay. Now, this back stitch is supposed to belong above this back stitch. So we're going to kind of extend it back. Won't be perfect, but It'll show up pretty good. And we're going to go through here, and I'm going to grab this little front thread part of this so it helps pull it together better. Not much, just a little bit. There. See, this is the part that just went around here. Now I've got it almost so it comes over here. Okay. I'm just going to come in back. This thread, it looks, looks like the one particular part of the thread had to look thicker than the other, huh? Now, if there's anything you can you want to do, like cheat a little more. Uh-huh. Don't be piddling on me. Come on. There we go. Piddling little thing. Okay. So I'm going to take bring this up under here. And go into there. That's, that's a little better. Now just tie it off. I'm not going to tie this off because I want to take this apart. Then you just tie it off and weave your ends in. Now it's not going to look perfect, but it's going to look a lot better. In fact, you can just mess with it a little bit back and forth until you got it looking. I could mess it with it long enough to make it look pretty close to perfect. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that probably would have been a better choice. This needs to pull over a little bit more. Huh. 
Okay, so anyway, just fudge with it back and forth. I could still mess with this until I've got it looking almost perfect. But trust me, in an entire afghan, you're really not going to notice that one spot. And then just go in and weave in your back. And go back and forth until I have it looking almost perfect. Okay. All right. So that's how you do that. And I wanted to show you one more thing. In case you wanted to do a contrasting border. This is the this is for a contrasting border. See how pretty that looks in back. This is what it looks like if you do the way we just finished it. See, that's not as that's not as neat or as pretty as that one, is it? And there's only one thing you have to do to change. Really, really simple, easy change. Okay. You wrap and go behind like normal. something there. Wrap and go behind. Wrap and go behind. And then instead of wrapping and going through the two stitches, you go through the first stitch and then wrap and go through the second stitch. And what that does is instead of having this crossbar, it brings it up over your hook. And then when you go through three and four and three, it does this instead of that. Okay? So that's the only change you have to make if you're using contrasting border. Go through here like normal. Go under here. Where'd my cross stitch go? Lost my cross stitch. Like normal. And then instead of wrapping, you go straight into the stitch. Straight into the stitch. Wrap, pull through, okay. uh, go through stitch, wrap, go through stitch, bring through three, bring through four, bring through three. There you go. So you have that kind of sit back instead of that kind of back. That's the only change. Your corners are the same. Everything else is the same. This is a different pattern on here. And this is a different pattern on here. I tried two or three things. i can show you the difference in, in these. I think if I didn't if I didn't lock my thread. Okay. Now let's see. This one was you want to bring your corner together. Your pardon me. You want to bring these loops together. So you wrap, go behind the loops, and instead of wrapping you go behind the loops again. Make sure you're above that little crossbar. You're going in contrasting threads, so I'm going to continue that by doing loop, wrap, loop. And you do through three, do through four, and through two. Wrap. I have no patience with this thread today. Wrap, go behind like normal. Go a, a behind like normal here. You won't have that that line because you don't. It's not being carried across. Then you go into the last stitch, wrap, go into the next stitch, wrap, come through three, come through. No, pardon me. <laughs> Go through the stitch, wrap, go through the stitch, go through two, go through four, go through three. No, that's not what I want to do either. Okay. 
Sort that, reverse it. Okay. So you wrap, go behind like normal, but you don't wrap in between because you want these two together. So you go underneath and I'm doing it on contrasting threads. So I'm going to go in the stitch, wrap and go in the stitch. And you have only seven loops on your hook with the stitch. Wrap, go through three, wrap, go through four, wrap, go through two. You have one less stitch on your hook, so you have... Oh, I hate it when I strip the thread. Last. Okay, wrap, go under, don't wrap, go under, then go in the, that bar, wrap, and that stitch, go through three, go through two, pardon me, go through one, two, three, four, and three. That pulls it together, gives you a thicker top, or as long as you get those two together, wrap, go under, wrap, Go under, go in the stitch, wrap, go in the stitch. You can bring through two, bring through all but the last two. See? Oh, that's separate. I put a wrap in there, didn't I? Have it. I just did a whole left can that way. Wrap, go under, wrap, no, no, no wrap, no wrap. <sighs> okay. Go under there. Go on the stitch. Wrap. Go on the stitch. Oops. Stitch. Go through two. Go through one, two, three, four, five. Go through two. Anytime, anytime you want to get those two middle ones together, you make sure that they are bunched together without a s s oh fudge. And stitch, wrap, stitch, two, three, two, four, two, two. Okay. Now. I'm going to do the bottom of this like I did back here. But I want to show you how you get these chevrons together. You wrap and you go behind like normal. But don't wrap. Again, go right to the bottom. Bring up your stitch. Then you can go in the to your bottom three here. And you bring through two. You bring through one, two, three, four, five, and through two. I don't like that extra bunch, bunch there. So I'm going to wrap, go behind, go behind, go in. Wrap, go in, pull through two, pull through one, two, three, four, pull through three. I like that better. Wrap, go behind, no wrap, go behind, no wrap, go in the stitch, <laughs> wrap, go in the stitch. So you actually only have two wraps, you have the one above and the one between the two base stitches. Go 
go through two, go through one, two, three, four, go through three. Wrap behind, behind, in the stitch, and then wrap again in the stitch through two, through one, two, three, four, and through three. And that brings them together and it gives you a long bottom. So many variations on this, it's incredible. Play around with a little bit. Okay. Now this one, to make them more spread apart, I bunched this bottom one with the bottom three. Then I bunched the next three and then the top three. So it's three, three, three. That's all I did there. Just the way you bunch them totally changes the way the pattern looks. So you wrap, go behind. A minute. Uh, 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 uh. Go behind and in the hole. Then wrap, go under and in the hole. Then stitch, wrap, stitch, go through three. No, wait a minute. Uh, 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 uh. Go through four. Sorry. So it's stitch, wrap, stitch. You want this bottom one bunched with these bottoms. There, see? Then you want this top one bunched with these guys. So you go through three, and you go through three. So you have four, three, three. Let's try that again without the mess, shall we? Okay. So you wrap, go behind. These three are going to be together, which will separate it from that one. Then you wrap, go under this one. Then you go through this stitch, wrap, go through this stitch, go through two, actually go through three, no, go through four, go through four, and go through three, and go through three. Okay, now. You can wrap and go through. This is very dense, so you don't have to worry about being too thin if you do it this way. Go through your stitch, wrap, go through your stitch, go through two, go through four, go through four. All you have to do is pay attention to what you're doing and repeat it. So you write it down and repeat it. This yarn is a lot stiffer. Than the gray yarn I was using. So you want to bunch this with the bottom. And you want to bunch this separate from the bottom, separate from the top. See? Okay. Okie dokie. Now, I, have, I already made this piece here because I'm going to show you afterwards how we connect the two sides. And I've done this three times already, and I just really don't need to do that little extra one again. Bring a slip stitch up through a hole. Any hole. And you can either bring through both pieces or one. I prefer to bring up both. Okay, bring a loop through both and chain two. In the instructions, it looks like this. Slip stitch, pull loop from next stitch, which is what we did here. Pull loop through both, chain two. Okay. Now we're going to wrap, go behind. We're going to wrap and go behind. We're going to wrap and go below. In the next stitch. 
through three, through four, and through three. Now, first couple stitches look like yuck anyway, but you want to go under this stitch and between the hole and through the hole that's between the posts. Then you wrap. You go under this back stitch you did here, and there's a little crossbar you want to look for. Go above it. Then you wrap, go in the stitch you just used, go in the next stitch, wrap, come through three, come through one, two, three, four, and three. Wrap, go under that that top back uh, behind. Go through the hole between the two posts. Wrap. Go below the last behind stitch, above that little crossbar, in the hole between the two stitches. Then you wrap the same hole you're in, the next hole, through three, through four, through three. Now this next hole is actually the stitch that belongs to the shaft we just made. Wrap, go behind, wrap, Go below that and above that little crossbar. Wrap, go in this stitch and the next stitch. Two, three, two, four, two, three. So you wrap W, go behind the post and pull up a loop, B. Wrap, go behind wrap, go through the last stitch, go through the next stitch, and that's the SS. Pull loop to three on hook, four on hook, and three on hook. Instructions look like this. Wrap behind, wrap behind, wrap, stitch, stitch. And you go to three, to four, to three. So it's wrap behind, wrap behind, wrap, stitch, stitch. Wrap behind, wrap behind, wrap, stitch, stitch. Then through three, then through four, and then through three. Okay? Now the front looks nice like this. The back has that nice line on it, and that's because you're going above that crossbar. You wrap, go under this first one, because it's a, see how the sti stitch goes in and wraps around? It's actually a two strand. Go under the top strand into the hole between those stitches. Wrap. Go under the bottom one and above that little crossbar. Wrap. Go in the stitch you just used. And the next stitch, which belongs to the shaft we're making here. Go through three. Go through four. Go through three. Now, here's our corner with our, our two chains. Here's the last stitch before and the last stitch after. We're going to use these five differently. Now, the one between here and here is the transition stitch, and the one between here and here is the transition stitch. Okay, so for one and five, we chain one, because you need more room going around the corner, wrap, go under this one, bring up a loop, and we're going to chain one in it. So you have two spots where you have chain two. Then you wrap, go in the stitch you just went into, go into the chain two space, bring through th three stitches. What did I, oh, I forgot somebody. I forgot somebody. Okay, wrap, go under, then wrap, go into the the space we just used, and into the chain two space, bring through three, bring through four, bring through three. Chain one, wrap. Go through this, the extra chain that you put on that loop and between the two posts. Loop through. Chain one. <sighs> wrap. You're wrapping between these posts. Go under this one and over that little crossbar. Wrap, 
go into the chain two space only. Bring it through two stitches. You only have two loops because you didn't have an extra stitch to go through. Go through four, go through three. Chain one, wrap. Go through that extra chain that we made, bring a stitch through, and chain one, wrap, go below, wrap, go th through only the chain two stitches, go through two only, and go through four, go through three. Chain one. Now this is the first one, it's a transition. This is the second one going in here only. This is the third one going in here only. The fourth one, you go through that chain, pull up a loop, chain one. Wrap, go underneath, over that little bar. Wrap, go into the chain two space, go through two loops only, go through four loops, go through three loops. Now we have one here, three in the hole, one, two, three, four. This is our last one and it's going to be a transition. So we chain one, wrap, go behind, go in that second chain we made, chain one, wrap, go under and over that little bar, wrap, go in the chain two space, go in the next chain space, the very next chain pulls through three because you got two legs again, through four and through three. Now you have a total of five stitches for your corner. Now you wrap, go in that last, ch that extra chain we put in there, bring up a loop, wrap, go behind, wrap, go in the first stitch and in the next stitch. Wrap, go behind, wrap, go under and above that little cross stitch, wrap, go in one loop, one hole, and the next hole, two, three, two, four, two, three. Your corner is not going to look like it's a full corner until you've gone at least two stitches beyond because it tends to want to rock back on itself. So before you check it out, do another at least three stitches. Okay, and there you have it. So your two transition stitches are chain one, wrap, go behind. Chain one on the little wrap, then wrap, go behind on the bottom half, wrap, slip, stitch, and stitch. So it's three, four, three, like normal. But on the three center ones, number two, three, and four, you do not have an extra stitch in the bottom. You do the top just like this, chain one, wrap, behind. Chain one on that behind stitch. Wrap, behind. Because you have to have a wrap between your two behind stitches. Then you wrap and you go into the chain two space. So this stitch is chain two space. Then you go through two, four, and three. You do that three times and then you do your second transition one. Still chain one, wrap, do the behind stitch, chain one on it, wrap, go behind, wrap, stitch, stitch and it's three, four, three, and then you're back to normal again. Okay? All right. Now, when you come back around, um, after you've made, completed your last stitch and you wanna end up in the same stitch you started with, so you have two stitches in each hole, two stitches in each hole, make sure you end up with two stitches in your last hole, okay? second one of this one, the first one of the tie-on. Okay, now see how these go around each other on top? You want to duplicate that. So
so. This loop goes up to this shaft. You need the loop that goes to this shaft. And that's the one that would, would normally be on your hook here. So when you get through with your last stitch, just pull the loop all the way out. See? These are the loops that would normally be through. You go through the top loop because this is going to be the loop that belongs to this shaft. And then you come back down in here and you want to come down between this one, two, three loops. And you want it just as tight as the others. You want it the same size. Okay. Now, Bring your needle up behind here on top of this stitch. Go to your top stitch over here and we're going to bring it down behind. So we're pulling this down so it looks like it belongs there. See? And we're going to come up under here. Make sure you come up above your little bar and back. I'm going to come up under here. I'm going to go to grab this second one. I'm going to go back in the same hole. And bring it over. That's okay. It's going to be pretty close. Pretty close. In the whole great afghan, or bed throw, or whatever you're going to call it, bed spread, do not knot it until you are abs until you are happy with it. Okay. Now, in an entire big bed spread, you are not going to really notice that. Honest. It won't be that obvious. But that's about the closest you can do with this. You want to make sure you have your top stitch that carries on. And then when you want to bring your stitches through. Um, don't pull the wrap through like I did. Pull the bottom one through. Just stop and look at it for a little while and make sure you got it right. Okay. But that'll work for me. Okay. Now, one more thing I wanted to show you. When you do this with contrasting thread, this is what your back's going to look like. See here? Because you're going from loop to loop. When you go from loop to loop, it has to cross somewhere. It crosses between the loops. Now, if you don't want that, if you want your backs to look like this, all you do is modify how you make the bottom. The whole rest of the stitch is the same. What you will do is... You do your wrap, go through like normal, get through there, come on, wrap, go under. Now, normally you wrap first. You don't do that first. You go into this bottom one, and then you wrap, and then you go through this one, and then you wrap. That brings that stitch up in between them instead of going across them. And then you go through your three. through your four, uh, through your three. So you wrap, go under and between, wrap, go under and between. The only thing is you won't have that crossbar. You lose the crossbar when you do that. Then instead of wrapping, you go right into the stitch you went into, then wrap, and then go to the stitch. Go through three, go through four, Go through three. Okay? And then your back looks like that instead of like that. So that's the only difference. You wrap between stitches instead of wrap and then go through both stitches. 
Okay, I almost did a contrasting yarn, but I didn't like the look of it, so I stayed with blue. Alrighty, I think we're done. We did the transition. I showed you how to do the contrasting. By golly. Now, um, for other types of stitches, other things you want to change. See, I've got this one like this, where it comes closer together. All you do is you don't do the wrap between the top and the bottom. You'll have less wraps. You'll have seven wraps instead of eight. But you wrap, go behind, and then instead of wrapping, you go behind again. And then you wrap, and then you do your bottom stitches. And that pulls these close together. Now all you want to do is make sure you do your bottom gather. You make sure your one of your bottom gathers and this bottom, these two here are together. So you may, however you do your gathers, you want these together and then the top. So let's do, I think I got enough thread with this one. Yeah, I do. I'm going to change this to a together. So you're going to wrap, go behind, and then instead of wrapping, you just go behind again. And then you go under here, do your wrap under here, go through these three. Then you go through these three and three. So you have three, three, and three. Wrap, go behind, go behind, go under, go wrap. And under. Oh, I got my other stitch in. I don't need you there, baby. There we go. Okay, we go through three. We go through three. That brings these two guys together. And through three. And you end up with a close chevron instead of a spread of chevron. Now, if you want to really spread chevron, you wrap, go behind. Wrap and go behind, stitch, wrap, stitch. I'm sticking with that stiff wrap stitch because I'm doing it on contrast. And you go through four, that brings this down here. And then you go through three and three. Wrap, go behind, end of the hole. Wrap, go behind, and end of the hole. And I'm doing the stitch, wrap, stitch. Go through four, because that brings us down, and then through three, and then through three. And you end up with a top and bottom line. You have no connection whatsoever here. Makes it wider. Okay? And then you just make sure that they're gathered together in the same stitch with no wrap in between. If you wanted to pointy like a pointy little chevron. Okay. Try some different combinations. All the different combinations do different things and you might as well have fun with them. Okay. So border stitch, you slip stitch, pull a loop from the next stitch so that you have two loops. Pull a loop through both. Chain two. That gives you your first shaft. Wrap. Go behind the stitch. Wrap. Go behind the stitch, go through the last stitch, go through the next stitch, slip stitch. Two, two. So it's wrap, behind, wrap, behind. Stitch, stitch. Wrap, behind, wrap, behind. Wrap, stitch, stitch. Um, and if you want the contrast, you wrap behind, wrap behind, stitch, wrap, stitch. Okay, for your corners, you have five stitches in your corner. The first corner is the transition between the last stitch that you had and the next stitch. So you chain one, which gives you two stitches on the top. You wrap, you go behind your stitch as always, but you chain one, then you wrap, and then you go down and do your bottom. 
So you have stitch, stitch. Go to three, four, and three. The next three stitches are only in the chain two. So you chain one, wrap, go beneath your, go into that little chain when you go behind. Chain one, then go behind. And then wrap, go through your chain, and go through two stitches because you're not going through two, you don't have two legs. You're doing a pogo stick here, one stitch. So you go through two stitches and then four stitches and then three stitches, okay? So that's chain one, wrap, go behind through that second little stitch. Chain one, wrap, behind, wrap, stitch. That stitch is the chain two space. And then you go back up two, four, three. Okay? All right. I think we're done with the borders. So that's the whole project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you try it. Uh, if you do not want to do uh, one of these complicated borders, let's see. I need a loose one here. How about you? I'll do you. If you don't want to do a, com a complicated border, and you don't need to use two legs if you don't want to, chain two, do a row of half double crochets. Okay, do a, uh, do a row of half doubles around. And then you can use the same thread or a contrasting thread, however you want to do it. You come back, tie in like normal. And chain. And you can make this double or half double, however you want. Oh, I forgot we're going to go behind there, aren't we? Okay, because I'm going to show you we can do the behind stitch like we did uh, on these squares. And make this type of a border. Okay, so we will go through the back stitch and tie on. And for this, I recommend using one strand instead of two. And chain one, then wrap, go behind the next one, wrap, go behind the next one, You'll bring this forward. And you'll have an interesting border. You can also do both of these. Okay. And then go through both of these and you'll have it in back and you'll have the single line in front. See? For the corners, you want to have five in your corner, but you'll do stitch, space on stop. So it'll be stitch, space, then you do your next stitch, and space, like that. And you'll be able to go around your corner okay. Same with these down here. Okay. Okay. Anyway, have some fun with your borders if you like. Try different combinations of different things. 
I'm sure if you've been crocheting a while, you have at least one square you can play with. If not, make a simple square so you can practice on corners and edges and see what you like, okay? It's fun to do. It's fun to try things. All right. Happy hooking, guys. I love talking to you. Bye-bye.